Hi, it's Richard and Crystal in the car. Um, I want you to know that, um, let's just start from the beginning. Steve, Isonides and I, no one will um, disagree, we're in a relationship together for over five years and we're engaged. Um, if one of you out there had a breakup with their partner, like my mum and dad or my brother and sister or you and your partner, there would be an equal, equitable and lawful settlement of assets, wouldn't there? Um, this didn't occur from the man who threatened a hitman on me and um, exploited me financially and sexually for five years. And um, the evidence for that is on my website, which is really um, fitting, called killhim.info. Um, there's evidence of his pay sheets. There's all the evidence you'd ever need. I don't know how the world is not acknowledging this. And the powers that be, um, i.e. he worked for ASIO, um, have power structures that are systemic and they go right to the top and they are willing to exploit me in favour of um, people with money, privilege and power protecting their money and their reputations. But um, as a person who has been absolutely and categorically character assassinated, um, uh, they're exploiting me. Now, my vulnerability, of course, is that I apparently have a mental illness. Now, I've clearly indicated, um, I've tried um, to acknowledge for a long time, these systems of oppression um, go one after the other, and looking back in hindsight, I've been set up to fail. This has um, cost me um, an overdose, first of all, um, with the Dr. Whitaker case, and um, that was um, framed at further at um, all the all the agencies. Um, Mr. Ball of Ball and Partners um, was his lawyer who asked me to advocate for him, uh, to, to approach him on a legal level. He informs government policy and sits on the Australian legal bar, and he informs the ombudsman. This is an absolute um, setup. It is a conceited amount of arrogant privilege that uh, you would set someone up to fail. And um, it's inequitable, it's unfair, and um, it it's exploited an already vulnerable person, me. And um, that um, person then um, was framed at two vocat cases. One, um, I saved a man from getting beaten up. That was heroic of me. Got me beaten up, hospitalised, broken bones, all that kind of stuff. And um, they pinned it on me. Now, um, uh, I was the principal aggressor, apparently. There is video footage of the entire incident. And um, the dancing dog and the police freedom of information refused to release the information, which would exonerate me from all wrongdoing. But my name was cooked long before that. Who remembers losing their virginity? Well, um, most of you will say uh, it wasn't a pleasant experience, but I had an um, interesting one because I wrote, wrote about it in a public human rights award-winning book for which I was then exploited, framed as a um, sexual deviant and all that kind of stuff. And um, it was consensual. It was regretful. Hi, Debbie Morgan. How are you going? And um, it was just... Um, a way of scapegoating someone, you know? And I really believed in the advocacy of um, um, the troubled young person and um, actually um, went around and spoke about that for the next 20 years, um, leading by example and doing it out of altruism and goodwill to help, to share stories and to um, value... Um, my experience and learn from it and to value other people's experiences and learn from that. And to that, um, I was utterly exploited. Alan and Unwin saw the book coming and I think they thought like, they could frame me or, or either column A or column B I was because the Herald Sun, where I used to work as an illustrator, um, framed me with a um, big spreadsheet saying my descent into madness. And that was um, the catch cry for absolute 
character assassination. I was working at The Age then for about five years. And um, yeah, um, within about three weeks, I'd lost my job. Jamie Brown, the homophobic um, manager, and Louise LaRocca, the um, born-again Christian, conspired to get me out of the fucking place. Um, no one had my back there. I lost my case, um, discrimination, Victorian Human Rights League Opportunity Commission. I had, a, I had a human rights award from them. Um, they didn't stick up for me. Um, they exploited me. And, um, and I went across to work in mental health where I had a bit of a breakdown. But just going back to that story before, um, uh, there is um, a conspiracy to pervert the course of justice. It is endemic um, in Australian politics and it specifically has to do with me and I'm not I suppose the average everyday person because I have spoken in Parliament I have spoken on all the Today shows and the radio shows and done an audio book for Radio National and all that kind of stuff I was a semi well-known person not only for my public role at the age but um, um, socially and um, otherwise and also systemically as a mental health advocate and um, and then I was so exploited that um, oh, I actually spoke from Montreal to um, Dubbo to Warrnambool, keynote conferences, you name it, I spoke at it. And um, I did that a lot out of altruism and um, for assisting people. And um, what was I going to say? That's the problem with my memory now, I forget. Um, yeah, what was I going to say? Uh, yeah, so I did that for 20 years. And but 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 I was exploited. Now there's a um this movement of exploitation has dogged me my whole life, um and um there is oh that's right sorry, there's a conspiracy to pervert the course of justice in Australian politics, directly relating to me, exploiting um the idea that I'm some kind of sexual predator and um madman, and the other thing is um the conspiracy to pervert the course of justice victimizes a single person me and that's against the law um i've tried to call the australian human rights commission where i lost um one million dollars to a, um, a prejudiced um, situation and a conciliation which was supposed to be neutral but was free kicks to the other team the recordings of that are on the website I, additionally, um, I was uh, I lost um, one to two million dollars at AFCA, the Australian Financial Complaints Authority, where Tim Goss and Peter Fisher and the other cohorts and nepotistic um, privileged people with money um, dogged me um, and knew who I was, and um, they absolutely exploited me and set me up to fail. And there actually was a conspiracy to pervert the course of justice happening a set up to fail methodology that, that is only really um, clear in hindsight. And, um, and it was absolutely real. I lost one to two plus million dollars there. Um, I have um, then gone forward in life. Um, um, I've done a PhD, I've got a doctorate. Um, I'm not stupid, although I'm very forgetful now that I've actually attempted suicide inside a hospital from um steve um pulling punches because i threatened him about his uh the detriment he owes me and i end up in the hospital and uh, they treat me terribly there dr kumar there he um he knows about steve and his uh, murderous ways and um how he exploited me and how um, i was scared of him because of his threatening nature and how he threatened to destroy me and the toxic nature of how fragile that was and um and Steve left me homeless, squatting with his dying dog, tricked me into believing um, there was no equity, and then threatened me with a hitman. Well, I finished my PhD, and then um, I moved on, and um, I I um, failed two vocat cases, that's right, one, one failed that, and then failed another one, my own child sexual abuse case, where I was the victim, and um, I'd realised later in life and named it and called it. I was set up as a, um, uh, a, um, uh, an extortionist by Mr. Ball and um, for the Whitaker case because I had an innocuous recording. Now, I know when prejudice is being spoken to me. I feel it in people's bones and I feel the energy. Um, 
a lot of the time I was very sad with Dr. Whitaker and I spoke about suicide a lot and I was serious. That wasn't recorded uh, with any extortion in mind. That was recorded to actually check the um, reality of what was doing. And I've done that for many years, recording things. Um, Mr. Ball framed me internally to government agencies at APRA, at um, NHPOPC, at IBAC, at the police and the Victorian Inspectorate and the Ombudsman um, as an extortionist. At the same time, I gifted back $100,000 to Mark Eng. He was the person who um, um, used to have the house where me and Steve were um, in Footscray. And he saw how I loved the house in my art and he gifted me um, that money. And then he said it was a mistake, so I gave it back. That's how much I care about money. I actually don't care about money. I do care about human rights and I care about equality and I care about, uh, care about equity. And I care about a fair, just um, um, system. And as it stands, um, I am not a member of this society because it's gone right to the top. Um, my, my work cover didn't pay out um, with a legitimate um, realisation and stress that I was framed and the additional stress of doing my own client's vocat case when he um, had heinous child rape and incest issues and I was collecting and collating his story for two years and um, it, it, it stressed me out. When I finally got news that the magistrate said I was doomed to fail, that was rather colourful language for a sexual abuse survivor, um, I had a break from work and then the CD came in the mail because the lawyer didn't give me any response whatsoever from the case, which is illegal again. And um, and when the CD came in the mail, I took time off work. I thought I could claim on HCF, my income assist. And I tried to do that. And to this day, they refuse to pay me. They have been called out as um, a part of this movement to destroy me financially. And they are absolutely complicit in the conspiracy to pervert the course of justice. And they owe me at least $75,000. So um, they're caught up in it too. And then work cover didn't pay. It's been over 18 months. Work cover haven't paid me a cent. Um, everyone's splitting hairs and doing the delay, deny, defer model until I'm at great risk. And I am at great risk. And um, further to that, uh, that, that, at that time, uh, and then I was hospitalized because Steve's pulling punches behind working by proxy from afar to try and um, punish me for going after his money. And there is absolutely no reason why a single person out there watching this shouldn't say, Rich has had a bad time. He's obviously been exploited and framed and there is an equal, legal, equitable settlement to be had between Steve and Rich. And Steve sold a house while we're together for $1.1 million. In, in addition to that, he's got a million dollars in super, Telstra shares. Any person in the world could intervene in this situation. He's an, one of the kingpins that underpin um, my persecution by the mental health system and um further to that i um i then suicided in werribee mercy hospital a fair income attempt that was deemed a fatal injury and everyone just moved on there was nothing to be seen no one spoke and no one stood up for me so i did i stood up at again the health complaints commissioner the mental health complaints commissioner um uh, all these other places the, the, the ombudsman ben calder again government he agreed or, or ruled that there was nothing about uh, suicide inside a public hospital with an agreed illegal contraband that was apparently fatal and that i was un accidentally revived from by chance um because i was found with no pulse um he sees that as no problem and the apology was enough and the apology from the hospital was that um, um, we're sorry for returning a broken used toilet brush in your clothes because I tried to slit my artery open with that and they said it's not our policy to give away hospital property and with that audacious rude and obnoxious apology that was meant to 
rubbed me up the wrong way, and it did, with an amount of um, protection that only a systemic and brutal fucking um, conspiracy could withhold, they dealt that to me, and I, I, I further suffered. I have never got any justice, not my parents, not my sister, not my brother have ever stood up for me in those aspects and they have demonized me for being, um, you know, either crazy. They're all internally homophobic, so that's easy to exploit. Um, and and my sister says on my birthday two years ago, you're a druggo and a schizo and get the fuck out of our lives. Thanks, Jody Bongetti. I, th I have pity for you and all the other people that haven't stood up for me because you're actually just scared. You're scared that I'm a truth speaker and scared I'm gonna call you out. And you know, the reason you hang on to such wealth and prosperity as a favorite child is that you're scared of, of not being around the other people, of being alone and of not um, mimicking the same fucking diatribe that fucking, that mum and dad um, had house and kids. So, um, you know, you've gone to extraordinary lengths there, Dale, haven't you? You know, a couple of extra eggs, but um, look, this whole heinous fucking thing is the crown in the jewel of the fuck over that has been my life um, is now that the Office of Prime Minister and Cabinet refused to release my freedom of information. Well, this is interesting, isn't it? Here's the highest in the land and they absolutely refuse to release a single document and they first tell me there's thousands and thousands of matches and then they turn around, you don't exist. And that's exactly how society wants it. And everyone watching this is absolutely complicit because no one has intervened. No one has said to me, well, shit, what's happening in Rich? Let's help him. Let's go to the police with him. Let's, um, let's get him a lawyer. Let's, um, value his human rights. Let's, um, let's try and pay him back for the enormous amount of altruistic work he did for two decades. And, um, help him now that he needs help you know i sit behind my computer and I, I i try and find a new way to try and just ledger a, a semblance of human worth and dignity and, and it has never occurred and um i've just not got any traction anywhere um no insurances pay out um work out anything financial and it's all exploited uh, via the channel of mental illness and or being gay or or other um, prejudices that i've been framed with you know i'm a human being even if i was a rapist dog fucker pedophile you would have um an amount of um uh worth but since i suicided successfully mind you and it was a fatal injury in february 2021 i was quickly sewn up filled up with blood dumped unceremoniously from the hospital and from that very moment and before that way before that as the setup will go and the conspiracy goes i have been rendered a homeless innocuous political um scapegoat and a um vagrant this intelligently designed um poverty that i'm experiencing is an abhorrent way for the government to play the delay, deny, defer model that a lot of um, agencies and people do, and they do it with impunity. No one cares. I can't get one person to, in this world to say, why doesn't Rich get some justice? Why hasn't he been paid his work cover? Where are all the people in my life sticking up for me? I do feel like there's an allegorical um, resurrection thing happening there, like I was basically crucified in the hospital from systemic government abuse. It was low down on the percentage of mental health and a big bit on it was a rational um, reaction to actual systemic oppression and vile victimization. And to that, Dr. Lagrasso, at that, um, when I survived the suicide attempt, said in the exit notes, I am neither psychotic nor delusional, um, and I am grossly aware of what's happening, and I fucking am. And further to that, yesterday, I've been re-hospitalised re again and again, 
I've been cuffed by police, nearly tasered. It's been an absolute fucking poverty-driven and um, systemic conspiracy victimizing nightmare. Not one person has had my back. Not one person has um, advocated me in the same way that I advocated for total strangers for 20 years. In that way, I feel forsaken because I, um, by the hand of fate or something bigger than myself, am existing again. I'm here. Not that it matters, you know. For 18 months or more, I've been systemically oppressed and an intelligent, hello Crystal, intelligently designed vagrant and my friends, my family and society have sat and watched and waited. Um, and what are they waiting for? Fucking kill me already, you know. Um, it, 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 I have no food. I'm squatting. I've been squatting now for four or five months. There is um, a human rights law in this country that says that um, not even to do with the Charter of Disability with human rights for the people with a disability, which says I must not be exploited or victimised. I must not be arbitrarily denied life. I must have equal access to the law and equality before the law. This has not happened. I have been absolutely fucking blindsided. And apart from that, it's just about very human worth and dignity. Like, I'm an innocent person. I'm not perfect. I'm an earth monkey. We make mistakes. But I'm also um, got a, um, a, a heart that's big and divine. And I think um, I feel utterly isolated in the world. And I also um, don't know what to do. Um, I feel like um, like I... I'm very sad for um for all of you because you've all witnessed this. I, I, I'm not just a person. I'm an exploited person and a well-known person. And now I was semi-famous. Now I'm infamous. And that seems to be a bigger reason for the silent treatment endemically from family, from friends, and from um, acquaintances and a reason to burden me even more. What more do you want from me? I've got nothing. I've got no one. I'm, I, I feel sad for humanity because um, they believe liberal and slander and they're prone to gossip. And um, I'm a complex person. I'm a multidimensional person um, in a shamanic way. And um, the base liberal and slander that people believe, it's for common minds. And it's a common persecution that I'm suffering. And it's, it's so absurd. I mean, I can, I can, I can barely believe this is happening to me. People have inherent rights to have legal representation. I'm framed from every legal um, place that there is. I've never had a lawyer, despite all this injustice. I've been framed outside and I don't exist in alleged way in legality in this country. And you, you wouldn't believe, you wouldn't read about it. The Office of Prime Minister and Cabinet, even even AGIS, who investigate ASIO, are going to investigate. See, they won't. They're all protecting each other. You know what you can't stop me doing is speaking. And even though I've got a memory detriment now, and I know how my brain works, and I know that's true, from the fatal injury in hospital and losing all my blood, um, I oh, see what I was going to say. Yeah, yesterday. I, I, I was threatened, and, and if someone holistically cares for me, um, they must care about your income, your food, your, um, um, that you got friends. There's a whole lot of things a holistic person has to have, and I advocated for that for many years. Me, singularly, when I come to people with a problem, no one treats me in the same way I treated the world. They treat me... As, um, haven't you got a doctor or a family to look after that? My mother's a narcissistic freak. <laughs> Love you, mum, but gee, you hard work. My father, he's distant and aloof, an emotional um, roller coaster. And my sister, she fucking hates me. I couldn't think of a family doing more to damage and victimise one single person as a scapegoat in the unit and, and damn them the hell. I haven't even spoken to my brother in a couple of years. Um... 
and and I just went around to a friend's place, and they say, I'm in the middle of work, and I'm going, I've just threatened to top myself unless I get legal representation. And she goes, well, uh, she goes, uh, as if I, as if it was, I wasn't half serious or that that wasn't a big thing. It, it was like she just washed over it, and I'm like, you do realise that this systemic oppression has already killed me once, and it's elaborately designing my death again, waiting until the moment I do it. And she goes, don't turn this around on me. And I said, I, I just can't get traction anyway. I, I can't talk to a friend. I don't know what to do. Yesterday, I was forced to, um, by a law, a man-made law, the Mental Health Act, to take medication and needle from this fuck medication that um, I don't want and is, uh, it's unethical, it's um, illegal, and um, it's unjust. I'm not insane. Um, there's a little bit of colon A and B about that, but they're medicating me for delusions. What I'm speaking about is unequivocally fucking true, and I can prove it, and I have, and I don't know why the world has gaslighted and rejected me. And um, they threatened to take me into hospital again. That's not a method of caring. That's a method of persecution. That is by identifying, vilifying, and victim victimizing a singular person and isolating them, and then calling them mad, and then force medicating them with one single law, when I, on the other hand, can't find a psychiatrist, can't find a lawyer, can't find an advocate, don't can't go to police. I can't I can't say anything to police. I think it goes back to the years of losing the other virginity and, and being framed in that way, but police won't have a bar of me. Every time I try and report an injustice, they go, how's your mental health? And, I, and it angers me. It drives me nuts. There is serious legal um, inadequacies and illegal things that have occurred. Why isn't anyone helping me? Why doesn't someone say, gee, it's tough what's rich going through? Why didn't anyone at the age say, oh, don't fire Rich? Why didn't anyone any other time say, well, you know, maybe we got it wrong. Maybe it's us who has the, um, the, the fleeting prejudice that's easy to flick him off, but that's just one, one stick in the many hundreds of thousands of sticks in Australian society that have fucked me over. It's easy to flick a whole holistic person off by naming them as one thing. But I'm more than just, um, you know, a little bit of madness or kookiness. I'm a whole thing. And the whole thing needs to be acknowledged. And the whole thing has legal rights. And the whole thing has human worth and dignity and value. But the world hasn't given that to me. You've, you've scapegoated me. You've catfished me. You've um, gaslighted me. I'm worth nothing. And I have no one. I have no food. Um... I barely have, um, uh, look, I don't have money for rent. This is an intelligently designed poverty that is constructed and um, dictated by the, by the Australian government and um, the lack of the prosperity of the much detriment and legal things that I'm owed is a part of the movement to oppress me and to try and destroy me. <sighs> you wouldn't believe it. And, you know, I had to take a needle yesterday and it, it was totally fucked. And if they're caring for me, caring for someone with a bunch of psychiatrists is not caring because all they do is identify the, your illness. It's an us, us and them thing. When in actual fact, I'm actually quite astutely aware of what's going on and I have a big heart and I feel sorry for you all. And the other thing is, sometimes um, madness in individuals is really rare, and in society, it's the norm, hey? And I'm just going to leave you with that. Now I've got to go home, having tried to ledger my many injustice issues and just get a foot in the door with a voice um, or some dignity or some worth um, and threaten to top myself, hello, I wasn't going to, but... I'm distressed. Sure, I'm distressed. It's an intelligently 
and maliciously and consciously designed madness victimizing me and everyone out there you're not intervening i don't know what to do i'd love if someone said gee rich is having a hard time why don't we help him um oh there's an obvious legal issue with his former partner who's pulling strings behind the scenes to keep keep uh, to protect his money privilege and power and you know what everyone out there seems to have a um a bit of wealth behind them and or, or at least um not the detriment that i've had to suffer and the prejudice and stigma that i've had to, and shame that hasn't been mine it's not my shame it's actually all yours and um you know that's not mine to have um it, it's not mine take it take it back and um i just can't believe this is happening to me and i'd really love if someone said gee you know let's help rich even financially, because when he gets the detriment and his work cover, which just can't go forever, he'll pay you back. How about some help, people? I'm begging you. Do you want me to beg some more? It's just an abhorrent thing, you know? You can't stop me speaking, and I will speak my voice, and I will call out toxic, narcissistic, selfish, and conceited, arrogant people who are, like Steve, violent, and, and drug me and all this kind of stuff and that further he um acts from a position of protection and nepotism and conceited privilege roasting with money and i am an exploited victim but i've got the phd so but you know we won't worry about that um it just astounds me the amount of contradictions are happening here anyway do you want to go to the dog park crystal crystal in a dog park? I love you. We love you all. But gee, we pity you. Please help me.